Hi everybody and welcome to Independent Art Storytime. I've got a bit of a longer story for you today, probably take about 15 minutes so make sure you've got your cup of tea uh, or a hot chocolate or a beverage of your choice and snuggle up and uh, I hope you enjoy the story. The story comes from a book called The Fib which is written by George Layton. Um, I think there will be many children across the land who've had these stories read to them at some point, perhaps by their teacher at school, some of them perhaps even by my dad when he was teaching you, and it was his recommendation that I shared some of these stories with you. Some of you might recognise people who are in the story, the characters are all quite familiar, um, and it's set in a primary school, somewhere around about the 1950s, but I think most of us will recognise someone because things don't change that much. The first story that I'm going to read you from the book is called The Balaclava Story. I hope you enjoy it. Tony and Barry both had one. I reckon half the kids in our class had one. But I didn't. My mum wouldn't even listen to me. You're not having a balaclava. What do you want a balaclava for in the middle of summer? I must have told her about ten times why I wanted a balaclava. I want one so I can join the balaclava boys. Oh, go and wash your hands for tea and don't be so silly. She turned away from me to lay the table, so I put the cursed of middle fingers on her. This was when you point both your middle fingers at someone when they're not looking. Tony had started it when Miss Taylor gave him a hundred lines for flicking paper pellets at Jennifer Greenwood. He had to write out a hundred times... I must not fire missiles because it is dangerous and liable to cause damage to somebody's eye. Tony tried to tell Miss Taylor that he hadn't fired a missile, he just flicked a paper pellet, but she threw a piece of chalk at him and told him to shut up. Don't just stand there, wash your hands. Eh? Don't say eh, say pardon. What? Just hurry up and make sure the dirt comes off in the water and not on the towel. Do you hear? Oh, Mum. She didn't half go on sometimes. I don't know what you get up to at school. How do you get so dirty? I knew exactly the kind of balaclava that I wanted. One just like Tony's. A sort of yellowy brown. His dad had given it to him because of his earache. Mind you, he didn't like wearing it at first. At school, he'd given it to Barry to wear and got it back before home time. But all the other lads started asking if they could have a wear of it too. So Tony took it back and said, from then on, nobody but him could wear it, not even Barry. Barry told him he wasn't bothered, because he was going to get a balaclava of his own. And so did some of the other lads. And that's how it started. The balaclava boys. It wasn't a gang, really. I mean, they didn't have meetings or anything like that. They just went around together wearing the balaclavas. And if you didn't have one, then you couldn't go around with them. Tony and Barry were my best friends, but because I didn't have a balaclava, they wouldn't let them go around with, him, with me. I tried. Oh, go on, Barry. Let us walk round with you. No, you can't. Not a balaclava, boy. Oh, go on. No, please. I don't know why I wanted to walk round with them anyway. All they did was wander up and down in the, in the playground dressed in their rotten balaclavas. It was daft. Go on, Barry. Be a sport. I've told you, you're not a balaclava boy, you have to have a balaclava. If you get one, you can join. But I can't, Barry. My mum won't let me have one. Hard luck. You're rotten. And then he went off with the others. I wasn't half fed up. All my friends were in the balaclava boys, all the lads in my class except me. It wasn't fair. The bell went for next lesson. A whack. Handicraft with misery good scarlet. Then it was home time. All the balaclava boys were going in and I followed them. Hey, Tony, do you want to go down the woods after school? No, I'm, I'm going round with the balaclava boys. Oh, blooming balaclava boys. Why wouldn't my mum buy me a balaclava? Didn't she realise that I was losing all my friends and just because she wouldn't buy me one? Hey, Tony, we, we can go goose gogging. You know those great gooseberry bushes down the other end of the woods? I told you. I can't. Yeah, I know, but I thought you might want to go goose gogging. Well, well, I would, but but I can't. I wondered if Barry would be going as well. Is Barry going round with the balaclava boys at all? Of course he is. Oh, blooming balaclava.
balaclavas. I wish they'd never been invented. Why won't your mum get you one? I don't know. She says it's daft wearing a balaclava in the middle of summer. She won't let me have one. I, find it. I found mine and put home in our attic. Tony unwrapped some chewing gum and asked me if I wanted a piece. No thanks. I'd have had to wrap it up in my handkerchief once we got in the classroom. Couldn't get away with anything with Mr Garnet. Hey, maybe you could find one in your attic. For a minute, I wasn't sure what he was talking about. Find what? A balaclava! Oh no, we, we haven't even got an attic. Didn't half find handicraft class boring. All that mucking about with compasses and rulers, or else it was weaving and you got all tangled up with balls of wool. I was just no good at handicraft, and Mr Garnet agreed with me. Today was worse than ever. We were painting pictures, and we had to call it My Favourite Story. Tony was painting Noddy in Toyland. I told him he'd get into trouble. Garnet will do you. Why? It's my favourite story. Yeah, but I don't think he'll believe you. Tony looked ever so hurt. But honest, it's my favourite story. Anyway, what are you doing? He leaned over to have a look at my favourite story. Have you read it, Tony? I don't know. What is it? It's Robinson Crusoe. What do you think it is? He just looked at my painting. Oh, I, I see it now. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I get it now. I couldn't make it out for a minute. Oh, yeah, there's Man Friday behind him. Get your fingers off. It's still wet and that isn't Man Friday. It's a coconut tree and you've smudged it. They were using some stuff called poster paint and I got covered in it. I was getting it everywhere. So I asked Mr Garnet if I could go for, for a wash. He gets annoyed when you asked to be excused, but he could see I'd got it all over my hands, so he said I could go, but he told me to be quick. The wash basins were in the boys' cloakroom, just outside the main hall. I got most of the paint off, and as I was drying my hands, that's when it happened. I don't know what came over me. As soon as I saw that balaclava lying there on the floor, I decided to pinch it. I couldn't help it. I just knew that this was my only chance. I never pinched anything before, I, I don't think I have, but I didn't think this of, as well, I don't even like saying it, but, well, stealing. I, I just did it. I picked it up, I went to my coat, and I put it in the pocket. At least, I tried to put it in the pocket, but it bulged out. So I pushed it down inside of the sleeve. My head was throbbing and even though I'd just dried my hands, they were all wet from sweating. If only I'd thought a bit first, but it all happened so quickly. I went back to the classroom and as I was going in, I began to realise what I'd done. I'd stolen a balaclava. I didn't even know whose it was, but as I stood in the doorway, I couldn't believe I'd done it. If only I could go back. In fact, I thought I would, but then Mr Garnet told me to hurry up and sit down. I was going back to my desk. I felt as if all the lads knew what I'd done. How could they? Maybe somebody had seen me. Oh, no. Yeah. How could they? They could. Of course they couldn't. No, of course not. What if they did, though? Oh, heck thought home time would never come. But when the bell did ring, I got out as quick as I could. I was going to put the balaclava back before anybody noticed, but as I got to the cloakroom, I heard Norbert Lightowler shout out that somebody had pinched his balaclava. Nobody took much notice, thank goodness, and I heard Tony say to him that he'd most likely lost it. Norbert said he hadn't, but he went off to make sure it wasn't in the classroom. I tried to be all casual and took my coat, but I didn't dare put it on in case the balaclava popped out of the sleeve. I said to Ra to Tony, Ta-ra, Tony. See you tomorrow. Yeah, ta-ra. Oh, it was good to get out in the open air. I couldn't wait to get home and get rid of that blooming balaclava. Why had I gone and done a stupid thing like that? 
Norbert Lightyear was sure to report it to the headmaster and there'd be an announcement about it at Morden Assembly and the culprit would be asked to own up. I was running home as fast as I could. I wanted to stop and take out the balaclava and chuck it away, but I didn't dare. The faster I ran, the faster my head was filled with thoughts. I could give it back to Norbert, you know, say I'd taken it by mistake. No, he'd never believe me. None of the lads would believe me. Everybody knew how much I wanted to be a balaclava boy. I'd have to get rid of the blooming thing as fast as I could. My mum wasn't back from work when I got home, thank goodness. So as soon as I shut the front door, I put my hand down the sleeve of my coat for the balaclava. There was nothing there. That was funny. I was sure I'd put it down the sleeve. I tried maybe the other sleeve and there was still nothing there. Maybe I'd got the wrong coat. Nope, oh, it was my coat all right. Oh blimey, I must have lost it when I was running home. I was glad in a way. I was going to have to get rid of it and now it was gone. I hope nobody had seen it drop out but oh, I was glad to be rid of it. My new I was dreading going to school the next morning. Norbert will probably have reported it by now. Well, I wasn't going to own up. I didn't mind the cane. It wasn't that, but if you owned up, you had to go up on stage in front of the whole school. Well, I was going to forget about it now and nobody would ever know that I'd pinched that blooming lousy balaclava. I started to do my homework, but I couldn't concentrate. I kept thinking about assembly the next morning. What if I went all red and everybody else noticed? They'd know I'd pinched it then. I tried to think about other things. Nice things. I thought about bed. I just wanted to go to sleep. To go to bed and sleep. Then I thought about my mum. What she'd say if she knew I'd been stealing. But I still couldn't forget about assembly next day. I went into the kitchen and peeled some potatoes for my mum. She was ever so pleased when she came in from work and said, I must have known she brought me a present. Oh, thanks. What have you got me? She gave me a paper bag and when I opened it, I couldn't believe my eyes. A blooming balaclava. There you are. Ah, now you won't be left out and you can stop making my life a misery. Thanks, Mum. If only my mum knew she was making my life a misery. The balaclava she bought me was just like the one I'd pinched. I felt sick. I didn't want it. I couldn't wear it now. If I did, everyone would say it was Norbert Light I was. Even if they didn't, I just couldn't wear it. I wouldn't feel it was mine. I had to get rid of it. I went outside and put it down the lavatory. I had to pull the chain a good three times before it went away. It's a good job we've got an outside lavatory or my mum would have wondered what was wrong with me. I could hardly eat my tea. What's wrong with you? Aren't you hungry? No, not much. What have you been eating? You've been eating sweets, haven't you? No, I, I, I don't feel hungry. Don't you feel well? No, I'm, I'm all right. I wasn't. I felt terrible. I told my mum I was going upstairs to work on my model aeroplane. Well, it's my bingo night, so make yourself some cocoa before you go to bed. I went upstairs to bed and after a while I fell asleep and the last thing I remember was a big balaclava with a smiling face and it was the headmaster's face. I was scared stiff when I went to school the next morning. In assembly it seemed different. All the boys were looking at me. No, but Lightowler pushed past and didn't say anything. When prayers finished, I just stood there waiting for the headmaster to ask for the culprit to own up, but he was talking about the school fate. And then he said he had something very important to announce, and I could feel myself going red. My ears were burning like anything, and I was going hot and cold both at the same time. I am very pleased to announce that the school football team has won the Interleague Cup. And that was the end of assembly except that we were told to go and play in the schoolyard until we were called in because there was a teacher's meeting. I couldn't understand why I hadn't been found out yet. 
but I still didn't feel any better. I'd probably be called to the headmaster's room later on. I went out into the yard. Everyone was happy because we got extra playtime. I could see all the balaclava boys going around together. Then I saw Nor Norbert Leibtowler was one of them. I couldn't be sure it was Norbert because he had a balaclava on, so I had to go up close to him. Yeah, it was Norbert. He must have bought a new balaclava that morning. Have you bought a new one then, Norbert? You what? Have you bought a new balaclava, have you? What are you talking about? Your balaclava. You've got a new balaclava, haven't you? Oh, no. I never lost it at all. Some fool had shoved it down the sleeve of my raincoat. Well, I hope you enjoyed the balaclava story and we'll be back with more tales for you very soon.